G'day guys, welcome to the episode. We're out here and it's a bit rough, but I'm with Jed. And we took a risk last night and drove to a little town we know of. And yeah, we heard there's a yellowfin bite and we really want to land a yellowfin on this boat. I know we've done it before, but it'd be good that I've finally got all the gear. Like most of this stuff's mine. That, 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 not the Stella, but most stuff. We just thought we'd just bring my stuff and lures and everything like that. But yeah, it'd be awesome to get a yellow fin off the top, especially me, but we'll take one if Jed gets it as well. But it's a dream if I can get one off the top and then in my own boat, like that would just be awesome. So we took the risk and hopefully it'll, it'll pay off because it was a long drive, but yeah, wish us luck. You. just everywhere covering the horizon there's dolphins in front of us like, i've never seen so many birds in my life like they're just everywhere first fish have been sighted heaps of birds heaps of dolphins big whales I just saw probably the biggest tuna ever, just right in front of this massive big sickle. Just came up and that was the sickest thing ever. We just trolled straight over it, but yeah, that, that was just sick. Just seeing that made it work well already. Ooh, it's got me hyped as well. Double, double, yeah! She's tight, boys. Little tornado coming. Big man himself, he's on for something. Oh! Trina! Hey, Trina, bro! Oh, what the hell? I just saw one! Guys, go, go, you guys can get one! Quick, quick, quick! We just got a double and there's 70 keggers barreling everywhere. We just got a double and there's 70 keggers barreling everywhere. Get over him. Get off his head, man.
was a lot bigger than the last one. Woo. That was seriously five minutes of trolling. We put the lures back in. We saw them busting again. Straight through them. Might be getting close here. Oh, when it gets close, unclip that, and you can help me with like grab the lens. Yeah. Or well, do you just want me to go? You sure? Yeah, colour. Leader, almost. Jumbo! Is he? He's a jumbo. Leader. He's a jumbo. Ready? It's Yeah, neutral. Oh, yeah. Steer away from the motor. Get the other gaff, get the other gaff! Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, he's not in the way yet. Ready? One, two. Not yet, not yet. The gaff? Yep. One, you call it, you call it. One, two, three. Oh, oh f***ing. Woo hoo! The gap came out. Oh, what the hell? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> 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 yeah! Yeah! Woo! Yeah. Woo! Woo! Finally, your beauty's finally. Woo! I got one on your beauty. Oh, I'm exhausted, but. What about you? That one? It's a good 50 kilo fish. I know we said we want it on the stick face, so we'll go troll, but like, when you see them busting up, they're on the troll straight away, so you, like, you, you hook up anyway. But we are frothed, and that was a disaster waiting to happen. It's hard with two people, honestly. You've got a leader, you've got holding the fish, the rod. The good old King Brown laser pro. We better get out and get another one. Yeah. We're on again. No batteries charged or anything. Jen's on this time. We're already, already in the boat, almost. And I was trying to do everything and Jen's got the fish on. We've got like none of the fight, but five minutes in the water again. Yeah, 
Saturday. Harry's just hooked up to a nice fish off the top. Good guys, good guys. At least we're drifting that way and the fish is I'll trim that motor off the top. What do I need to do, Harry? Right, right in here for 
I was locked drag, I couldn't really do much. You know, it is what it is. Still a blessing to actually just hook that fish. It's a big, big dog, but uh, anyway. That is devastating. We got two on deck, we saw it. Fish right there, but it is what it is. Anyway, I'm gonna send it in. Oh, that's a bit devastating, but you know, fish on deck. I can't complain. Just to hook that fish, like I said, just awesome experience. Four hours though, it hurts, but you know, I couldn't do much more. Anyway, we'll see you guys in. Just got the tuna down the boat ramp. I did stop pretty abruptly yesterday because we were just so tired, we just wanted to drive home and didn't really worry about doing any more video, but we just kept the fish in the fish bag. We had one each and Jed's probably gonna do his today and I'm doing mine. So yeah, this is gonna be the first tuna I've ever done all by myself with no help. Like Ryan's helped me the last two. And this one's all by myself and I'm just gonna fill it at all. Put heaps in the fish bag and then give heaps away and freeze heaps and yeah, fish for days after this. So yeah, I'll get this done. I've been talking to a few people and like, you guys probably saw it was like a heartbreak moment because when I started yesterday, I said the best thing today would be get one off the top, my first one off the top on my own boat. And to me, regardless that I lost the fish, like I lost the fish of the boat, I can't deny that. My line snapped to hit the boat right when we're about to gaff it but to me you know i didn't need another 60 kilo fish 50 kilo fish whatever it was and after three hours i was just knackered i didn't really care if it was going to break i just wanted to go home because it was getting dark and it broke at exactly 5 p.m that night three hours three hours plus fight and you know i can't get a photo with it saying i landed my first one off the top because to me even though we lost it at the boat, I basically landed. It was three hours, didn't pass the rod to Jed once. Did it all myself, basically. Jed obviously helped heaps with reversing and driving and stuff like that to help get the fish up. But I'm one for saying, just take what you need. And this is way more than what I need. But if I had another fish on deck, you know, I wouldn't really be listening to myself and take what you need. It'd be way too much fish for me and my friends and family. So, you know, I'm not, bummed like I'm not upset that I didn't get that fish on deck because you know it kind of go against what I say but it would have been good to get a photo with it like I said but you know it's fishing I'm not I'm not upset it was an awesome day out there regardless we caught a dream fish each and lost heaps more and just being out there part of it all was just awesome and just seeing the fish bust up like that was good enough just to just to admire it look at that meat I'm actually doing a half decent job. You know, these bits you can just pick off at the end. And the meat's pretty good quality. I'm feeling here different to what the way Ryan told me was. So I just started doing it this way because I've never done a full one by myself. And this is working actually quite nicely. Just doing section, 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 section. But yeah, doing a decent job. So it's probably about 30 to 40 kilos worth of meat there. Most of the meat, as much as I can really get off the yellow fins gone. Even some little medallions and stuff around the head. I know some people use the wings and the head for stuff, but I don't really do it. So nature can take its course for that one. But yeah, we'll start doing the skin and taking the blood out of the fillets. But for the, the size of the fish, it's actually pretty, pretty well bled. There's a bit of blood through the fillets, but we'll cut that out. It should be pretty good. All clean. You managed probably 20 to 30 kilos worth of meat. It's all in bags in the box, but yeah, plenty of fish to feed everyone, so I'm happy. Welcome back, everyone. We're in the Offshore Adventures house, and I'm going to show you guys how to turn this yellowfin into this canned tuna. So I am in the house today. I would love to do this outside, but it is kind of hard to do that because you need a pressure cooker and you need lots of ingredients. But, you know, I don't really want to show the whole world my house and photos of me as a kid, but, you know, it is what it is. We'll get this done and hopefully 
you guys can learn how to make canned tuna because I've loved learning this and it's probably the first ep ever episode that I've actually done some research and kind of tried myself before actually doing the video. So I've tried the flavors and everything a few days ago and I've worked out what I really like and now we're doing it properly and yeah, canned tuna. The best thing about doing this is you get so much fish. You can give heaps away and you can, you know, eat heaps fresh, but no matter what, you're really gonna have a lot to freeze. And when you have a lot to freeze, you know, it kinda goes to waste, you get more fish and it goes to back and then before you know it's been there for a year. So, even though it's vacuum sealed, it's probably the best you can do when you're freezing stuff. The next best is putting them into jars. They can last three years in a sealed jar in the pantry. And then once you open it, you put it in the fridge, but you guys know canned tuna, it can last on in the pantry for ages. So that's what we're gonna do. And it gives another use to tuna instead of just deep frying it like I always do. And also it helps not buying commercially caught because I'm against it. Doesn't mean no one else is, but for me, I'd love to provide my family with canned tuna without them having to buy it and support commercial fishing. Anyway, let's get started. So first things first is we're gonna cut up all the raw tuna. I've got two massive bags of it. And you can see it is goes a bit darker and a bit less appetizing once you freeze it. So it probably wouldn't be that good as sashimi, but for canned tuna and cooked tuna, it's fine. And once you've done that, all into a big bowl. So I've only cut up about two big fillets. There's still heaps in the sink because I've only got one pressure cooker and I can only cook a certain amount of jars at once. So I'm not gonna try and do it all at once and then just have heaps sitting there. Anyway, you can use really any flavors you want. I've actually tried a few different flavors and see what works and what doesn't. And I really liked tomato relish and caramelized onion. I tried them and I really enjoyed it and so did mum. And the best thing about this is dad eats the tomato and onion green seas tuna. So if I can get it to taste anything like that, dad will enjoy it as well. So I'm not gonna tell you how much to do because I don't really measure, I just pour it in, mix it up and see what works well. So we'll try and we'll see how we get. So a bit of tomato relish. And we can always add more, so it doesn't matter too much if you don't add enough the first go. Bit of caramelized onion. It smells pretty good. It actually looks decent. Next thing I'm gonna add is a little bit of olive oil. Alright, mix that in. Fair bit of salt. And a little bit of pepper depending on how much you like. And remember guys, you don't have to follow what I'm doing. You can add any flavours you want if you think it's going to work well. These are just the flavours I've kind of felt like they work nice and yeah, as simple as that. Mmm, delicious. I'm telling you, it doesn't look very appetizing, <laughs> but it tastes damn good. I went on to eBay, bought a few jars. These are screw top jars. You can use these ones, but they're probably not as good. You want the screw top ones because they're the ones that are gonna store for the longest amount of time without going off. Next step, you probably should have done this first, but I forgot to mention it, and I haven't even done it yet, is <laughs> sterilize every single jar and every single lid in the dishwasher so you will not get sick when you eat them. That's the most important thing. Don't forget this one. I almost forgot it and I'll probably be spewing up. No, I don't know. I might not be spewing up but it is important to do so I'm going to do that now and I'll see you guys very soon. Alright ladies and gentlemen, dishwasher's done. We are going to jar some tuna. So I did cut up a bit more and add a bit more into it but she's ready to go. And yes, I am putting it in raw. If you're wondering why, it does cook while it's in the pressure cooker. And I have tried both ways, and I did prefer the raw. It didn't go as dry, and yeah, it turned out a lot better. So I have done my research, guys. Don't underestimate me. I know what I'm doing, somewhat. You wanna fill it relatively full, not too full though. And then try not to touch the edges. 
or the edges of the lid and seal it tight and it's ready to go. Now we just repeat that process until we basically finished all of the tuna in there. So we are ready to cook. It's just in the jar sealed. I did try a couple other flavors that mum wanted me to try. Um, there's a beetroot one and a mustard one. So yeah, we'll cook now. So that's all you gotta do. About that much, don't wanna fill it fully so it explodes, but close to the top, you get the most in it. And yeah, doesn't look too appetizing, but I can show you it's gonna be good. All right, so I've got my pressure cooker here. It was about 50 bucks off eBay, does a good job. It's not the best quality, but it does it. And I remember when it came, it came with all different language instructions and we didn't know what to do. Me and mum were trying to work out how to put it together with no instructions, but we ended up doing it, it's all right. Anyway, so I'm gonna fill this up halfway with water. This is the way I did it when I cooked it, so it works fine. So I'm gonna put this side of the stove on high and we are going to put in, I think, about five of these jars fit. They're not the perfect size for this pressure cooker, but works all right, so it's, it's all right. We've got six cans in there. Water's up about halfway, and the burner's ready to go on high. To shut the pressure cooker, you just squeeze down, pull it all the way around, and that's ready to go. So it might take about 15 minutes or so, but this will start making a weird sound and it'll start shaking because of all the pressure in there. So we've got this one on high, it's cooking on here, and then we've got this one ready to go on low. And once this is ready, we'll put it straight onto the low. So you hear it's making a bit of a hissing sound. So onto the low burner for about an hour-ish. The pressure, I'm pretty sure it doesn't cook it that much, it just makes sure they're sealed and then the low burner ends up cooking it all in the jars. So yeah, we'll see you in about an hour. One hour later. And result, you can see the tuna's actually cooked in there. A bit of liquid in there. Must just be from the oil and the, the liquid that was in the caramelized onion and the tomato. But yeah, that's ready to go. So I need to let them all cool down and start with these ones to get them all done. But yeah, I'll show you guys tomorrow when I eat some and it should be good, but I'll see you then. All right guys, it is not tomorrow. One of these I actually heard open, so I must have not screwed it on right. So I was like, oh, might as well try it. This, I'm not joking, <laughs> seriously tastes like canned tuna, but it's better than this. Than this. this is one of the most proudest times of my life because, oh, I don't know, I just, it's seriously so good. It, it is just such a better way for something to do with a lot of tuna. Or you could probably use other fish, but tuna, it is just so good. It tastes like this crap. You don't have to buy this shit anymore. And you're being way more sustainable if you use your own fish that you've caught. And it makes heaps of space in the freezer. I'm honestly not joking. If you do this, you will think it tastes like canned tuna, but just way fresher. That is seriously, I'm proud of myself, because <laughs> it is so good. If you are catching a tuna, try this, because it's a great way to use some meat and yeah, not have to store it in the freezer. If you ever want some on toast or something, just get a bit out and straight on, because it is so good. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Thanks Jed for coming fishing. We got some dream fish on this episode and yeah, made something pretty damn cool, I reckon in my eyes. Something completely different to what I'm normally doing and it turned out amazing. Took a bit longer, but seriously, it turned out amazing. You can see, I've got all these ready to do it again. Doing some right now, getting it all done because that is seriously unbelievable. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to hit the like, hit the comment and hit the subscribe if you did. And I'll see you guys next time. Yo! No nah, man, we got tuna, but...
Oh, straight in front, straight in front, I saw it! Straight in front, straight in front! Oh, right there! 